Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Year 10 Corinda State High School Parent Information Evening. It's exciting that we're doing this in this format and that we're able to um, connect with you all in this way. And this is the first time we've done a parent evening like this. So we're really excited to see how it progresses. And I'll hope you'll bear with us if we have any technical difficulties this evening. But fingers crossed, it'll all be fine and we'll be able to make it through the evening. So just for a little bit of housekeeping, uh, you'll probably notice that you're all actually on mute um, and we'll potentially keep it this way for the duration of the presentation. Um, but you're welcome to use the chat function to log any questions that you might have. And uh, we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Hopefully we'll have answered some of your questions along the way, but if not, we'll certainly get to those at the Q&A session at the end. Okay, so it's really exciting to see that we have quite a number of people online and we'll move through the session, but we are recording it as well, so it will be able to be viewed later on also. Thanks, Jake. So this session is going to cover the new Queensland Certificate of Education, our general and applied subjects, ATAR and what can contribute to an ATAR, our VET pathways and the set planning interviews. Thanks. So our aim for all students here at Corinda State High School is for them to achieve a Queensland Certificate of Education. A Queensland Certificate of Education is made up of four components. It's made up of a set amount of study, which is 20 credits, a set pattern, which includes 12 credit credits coming from core courses, a set standard, which means our students need to achieve a C standard or better in their subject results, and a literacy and numeracy component. Students achieve these results and these points by completing subjects at Corinda State High School. All of our subjects contribute to the accumulation of the points for a Queensland Certificate of Education and as they move through the study they will be accumulating one point for every unit of study. Thanks Jake. Thanks. So there are three types of study that can contribute to your Queensland Certificate of Education. They are core components, preparatory courses, and complementary options. All of our general and applied subjects come from the core components of the QCE calculation, and a lot of our VET qualifications do as well. It is my job at Corinda State High School to ensure that your student is on track for a Queensland Certificate of Education. So don't worry about these calculations. I'll be the one who's monitoring them at all junctures to ensure that they are on track to achieve their Queensland Certificate of Education. And a key component of that on the next slide is the literacy and numeracy components. And we will ensure that all students achieve this as part of their studies here. Predominantly that's achieved by studying one of the maths or English subjects here at Corinda State High School. And we also have the Certificate Two in Skills for Work and Vocational Placement which also contributes to both the literacy and numeracy component of a Queensland Certificate of Education. Your students have been working through their SLP classes and they have been looking at a range of aspects, including their strengths and weaknesses, what they enjoy and what they are looking to do when they leave school. As your students move through their subject selection for the senior part of our school, it's really important that they consider taking subjects that they enjoy, subjects that they are good at, and as well, subjects that are aligned with their future careers, including any prerequisite subjects for university courses if this is their chosen pathway. So when you and your student are considering their pathway and doing that planning, please ensure that you look at their strengths, their interests and their values. This will inform and it really be a part of their motivation to engage and help them achieve their preferred career pathway. If they're not enjoying it, they're unlikely to succeed. And our goal for everyone here is that they are successful in their studies in their senior phase of learning. 
By now, we hope that you have viewed the Subject Selection Handbook. The Subject Selection Handbook contains all of the subjects that we have on offer here at Corinda State High School. There are four types of subjects. We have general subjects, applied subjects, which include essential English and essential maths, and vocational and education training qualifications. You can find all of the subjects on our SharePoint page for the students. And this is the page that the students have been engaging in in their SLP lessons. Here we have the subject selection handbook, as well as a short video outlining each one of these subjects so that you have a better understanding of what is available to them here at Corinda State High School. What you need to be aware of as you move through these subjects is that our subjects in both the general, essential and applied space are offered in four units. In year 11, they study units one and units two as individual units, but in units three and four, they go together as a pair. This is important when do, we're doing QCE calculations and accumulating points for our Queensland Certificate of Education. This means that in Unit 1 and Unit 2, we calculate the points discreetly, but Unit 3 are studied as a pair, and therefore the two QCE points for these subjects go together as a pair, which means it's really important that the students are able to succeed in both Units 3 and 4, because the QCE points are attributed to success in both Units 3 and 4 here. Students... <laughs> Sorry. Subjects must be, what are you doing? Can you just oh, go, go back? <laughs> go back. <laughs> subjects must be studied as a whole year subject. And it's really important that our students are not in subjects that they are failing and not able to achieve success, as no results will mean that they are not credited with either points towards their ATAR or their QCE calculations. So it's really important that we're looking at subjects in which the students can succeed and that we get these decisions right because there will be very minimal opportunity for students to change early in year 11. Once the students are in their subjects for units three and four, they are locked in by the new QCAA processes and we are not able to make any subject changes at that point in time. The four types of subjects have varied assessment processes. Our general subjects in year 11 have all internal assessment pieces. In year 12, they have three internal assessment items with various weightings. Then they have one external assessment piece. In maths and science subjects, these external assessment pieces are weighted at 50% of their results. And in all other general subjects, they are weighted at 25%. Our essential subjects, which are essential maths and essential English, in year 11, they have all internal assessment. In year 12, there are three internal assessment pieces and then one common internal assessment item, which is set by the Queensland Curriculum and Assessment Authority and marked by teachers here at Corinda State High School. Our applied subjects in year 11 have all internal assessment items and in year 12 have four internal assessment items. And our VET subjects all have continuous competency-based assessment. In year 11, apart from VET, the students will undertake what we consider formative assessment. This is preparatory and assists in the learning of assessment techniques. But that's not to say that it's not important and not essential because students need to achieve success in these assessment items in order to accumulate QCE points and to be successful in their studies. In year 12, we have our summative assessment items these assessment items are the final assessment results assessed against the syllabus standards. And it's these assessment items that will contribute to ATAR calculations if that is the pathway that your student is choosing to take. In the subject selection handbook at Corinda State High School, we have listed the prerequisites for subjects. It is essential that students achieve a minimum requirement in year 12 for entry into subjects in year 11 and 12. It is important that this is achieved because if students aren't able to achieve in year 10, 
then they will not be able to succeed in some of the subjects we have available in year 11 and 12 because they won't have the underpinning knowledge to allow them to achieve success. As indicated this year, we are fully aware that COVID-19 has had some impact on your students' achievements this semester, but we will still be looking at these prerequisites as minimum grade for entry into subjects in years 11 and 12, because we are wanting them to be successful in their studies. As always, once we have done set planning, if your student has not met some of the minimum achievements, they will have additional time to be able to achieve these and be able to undertake a reset planning process later in the year to consider upgrade into some of those subjects. This will be discussed more at set planning and will be analysed on a case by case basis. But the prerequisite guidelines can be found on the last two pages of the subject selection handbook that is either on the Corinda State High School website or on the student SharePoint page. There are a number of pathways available to your students at, at Corinda State High School and one of these is an ATAR pathway. This is a pathway that is heading your students to a university outcome post school. ATARs have replaced the OP system an ATAR is only for entry into university. And if your student is not considering this, then it is not essential for them to be taking an ATAR pathway at Corinda State High School. And we would encourage them to take a pathway that is more aligned to their post-school outcomes. 33% of the population use an ATAR to apply for university entry. And it is one of the most direct ways that they can get into university. If a student wants to study at university, then they must ensure that they are studying the prerequisite school subjects for their courses of interest. Currently, the QSAT website is holding, it has the old prerequisites, but these are a good guideline for what students might be expected to study in terms of subject prerequisites for entry into these courses. ATARs are calculated in two ways, either with five general subjects or with four general subjects and one applied or completed certificate three or higher VET qualification. QTAC are the people now responsible for calculating ATARs and they will always take a student's best five options in the calculation of an ATAR. Here at Corinda State High School, we will have students start study six subjects and their best five will be used in their ATAR calculation. English subject is compulsory for ATAR achievement, but doesn't necessarily have to be a subject that is used for the ATAR calculation. ATARs are now relevant throughout Australia. There are the external exams for general subjects, and these are used to measure a student's overall position compared to other students. ATARs now come on an, in a 2,000 point scale as opposed to OPs that were only in a 25 point scale. Your student can now achieve an ATAR through the range of 99.95 down to zero. Many of you would be familiar with the OP system and this is a guide on how ATARs compared to the OPs that were achieved by our previous students in the previous system. The non-ATAR pathway is also another viable option for students at Corinda State High School. On this pathway, students will study any six subjects. Generally, they will study applied or VET combinations, but they can include some general subjects in this combination. Our VET opportunities are also outlined in the subject selection handbook, and you will find them in the later part of the um, subject selection handbook. There are a number of opportunities that are available to you when you study VET courses. Students can enter into apprenticeships, traineeships, cadetships, direct employment, further studies, and even into university. In previous years, students could use the individual rank from a certificate three, a certificate four, or a diploma for university entry. Under the ATAR system, UQ and QUT will no longer allow school leaver applicants to receive a standalone selection rank on the basis of a VET award. 
This means that students who do Cert 3s, Cert 4s or diplomas will have to wait for UQ 12 months and for UQT two years in order to use their school achieved diplomas for direct entry into these universities. At this point in time, Griffith University, University of Sun Southern Queensland and Queensland U University of Queensland, sorry, Central Queensland University have not yet released their positions. This year is a very unprecedented year and this year, universities have relaxed their entry requirements for 2020 year 12 graduates only. So I would encourage you not to use the 2020 information as a guide for what your student can achieve in terms of using VET for university entry. This year only will be when those relaxed entry requirements are applied. In future years, we will go back to the information that we have listed on the screen and the standards will be applied for students who are graduating in 2022, which will be your cohort. Other VET options at Corinda State High School are funded under what we call the VET in Schools funding. Students who wish to undertake a VET in Schools funded course need to be fully aware that they can only be subsidised for one VETIS funded course. VETIS funding is a state government funding source that is from the VET investment plan and they are the ones who determine which courses are funded by VETIS funding. Here at Corinda State High School, we offer a number of courses that use VETIS funding. They include the Cert 1 in Construction, Cert 2 in Engineering Pathways, Cert 2 in Electro Technology, Cert 2 in Automotive, Cert 3 in Health Services Assistance, Cert 3 in Hospitality. These are the ones that we have directly aligned with our school, but there are a number of other TAPE options that also use VETIS funding. Students will need to be aware in their set planning of which ones are covered by VETIS funding, as they will only be allowed to select one course of study from this funding stream. It doesn't matter whether it's studied at school. M-U-M, mum. No, Michael. M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Yeah. We'll just put you all back on mute there. So it doesn't matter if students are studying a VETIS funded course here at Corinda State High School or with an external RTO, the funding rules are the same and students will need to be aware of this as they make their selections in this area. In previous years, the RTO that we have used for construction and engineering has allowed students to study both qualifications concurrently for the single funding arrangement. And this will occur also in 2021, 2022. Another way to study VET at Corinda State High School is through a school-based apprenticeship or traineeship. School-based apprentices and traineeships are outlined in our VET guide in the subject selection handbook. Basically students start work and training while at school they are required to be at work one day per week for 50 days per nominal year of training as outlined by QTIS. Generally, this means that students have to do 50 days per nominal year at school. Students attend 40 weeks of school in year 11. So what it means is that you need to be prepared for students to work on the weekends, on school holidays and over the Christmas holidays in order to achieve this time frame. If you are interested in a school-based apprenticeship or traineeship, all of the SATs that we have um, made available to us are listed on the senior schooling notices under the traineeship and apprenticeship notices page. And this can be found on the student SharePoint page. Whilst at Corinda State High School, a number of students study external VET courses that are different to the subjects that we offer within our timetable. These studies are completed at external RTOs and require one day out of, week of school per week. These courses contribute to QCE points and possibly ATAR calculations. Students will need to manage these enrolments, their attendance and study loads with support from home as school because they are missing one day of lessons from school. At school, we will support them with a study line to help them manage their workload but it's important that students are on top of their timetables, on top of their study and working independently to ensure that they keep up to date with all of the things that they have going on as well as their VET studies. 
All RTOs require support from the school in order for students to enrol in these courses. And so approval from myself as the senior schooling HOD will be required before your enrolment to, into any of these courses can be complete. As part of the SLP program, students have also been working through our Virtual Careers Expo. It was disappointing that we weren't able to hold our face-to-face -face expo this year, but all of the exhibitors and more who you normally attend our career expo have their resources listed up here. Some of them have developed some specifically for our school and for our students to access. Students and parents are encouraged to go onto this resource and you can find this on the student SharePoint page to explore what options are out there in terms of both university pathways, TAFE options, other VET providers, direct entry to jobs, group training organisations, defence and other organisations that provide pathways for our students post school. At the top of the Virtual Careers Expo page, you'll find this link. The QCAA has prepared a guide to planning your QCE pathway. This is an excellent tool which will allow students to work through some of the information that we have displayed here tonight. It's also a good opportunity for you to familiarise yourself with the QCAA website so that you can find out more about your learning portal and your QCE account so that you can keep track of your studies, not only during 11 and years 11 and 12, but post school as well. This is where you will have a record of your VET qualification completions, your subject results, and all of your information regarding your senior phase of learning post school. So it's important that you get in touch with this page and keep it as a link into the future. The page offers a video which features in the centre some of our past students. It also offers lots of information on preparing for learning in years 11 and 12, what study plans look like and how to map your pathway in order to achieve a QCE. And this is a great tool and a valuable resource moving forward into the senior phase of learning. Other tertiary course information can be found on the QTAC website. This'll, this is where you'll find the prerequisites in terms of subject selection for university courses. Please make sure that you are looking at the 2022 information and not the information that is currently on the site for our 2020 graduates. It's important that you look at the year that you would be graduating and moving into other pathways because the information changes yearly. It's important that you keep in touch with this website also, particularly if you are looking to take an ATAR pathway. And finally, we will move on to the information for set planning. So as we, the students have worked through SLP this term and this semester, we are culminating in what are our set planning interviews. Every student is required to have a set plan interview with their parent or carer. In these interviews, we will look at your subject results. We will look at the information on what you have gathered in SLP in terms of your future, your identity, your interests, and what it is that you would like to do into the future. We will also look at your subject selection in these interviews and lock in your subject selections for the senior phase of learning, including any VET courses or any external partnerships that you may wish to embark on. This brings us now to the end of our presentation and I'm very happy to answer all of the questions that I've seen coming in whilst you've been looking at the presentation. Can we go back over the um, using VET to get into uni and the wait periods as under parents and what happens during the wait period? Yep, sure. Do you want to go back to that slide, Jake? Mm -hmm. Jake? So, uh, for those wait periods, the waiting periods are only for um, QUT and UQ. So um, you may choose to do other study in that time, you may choose to work full time, or you may choose to go to one of the other universities and start your university studies at either Griffith University, University of Southern Queensland or Central Queensland University, and then transfer to UQ and QUT. 
Uh, other options are to complete other diplomas or other VET courses that can give you credit with UQ and QUT whilst you're in that wait period. Does this answer your question? If not, feel free to type some more. Um, the Guild Falls asked a question about subject selections, when students have to select, but I think you may have covered that. I think, I, yep. So subject selection will occur in set planning and those interviews will be week two, term three. So next week, Mr Gallagher will send all of the year 10s and their parents the details on how to use the SOBS booking system to make those bookings for those interviews and um, we'll be looking to check that everyone has booked in for a set planning interview in week two of term three. Is there any way that parents can help their students access their SharePoint if they don't have a Um So students, parents can help them access the SharePoint. All <laughs> you need to do is get on to the student login and go to the student, um, it comes up automatically I think. In, under the MIS ID. So you need to do it on the student computer and the student email login. But once you do that, that should be the home page that comes up to you. And the senior schooling tab is on the left hand side. Um, trade, tracer, trade taster programs, will there be any coming up this year? Okay. Uh, you're going to be um, so just going back to um, the uh, getting on to the SharePoint pages, the links to the SharePoint pages were also in the letter, the Year 10 letter that we sent home uh, last week, I think it was. Um, so the Year 10 letter that Mr Gallagher sent home has the links to the SharePoint pages. The trade 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 taster programs that were run are run by TAFE. Anyone who signed up for a trade taster program and was accepted into the program, those programs will still be running in term three and term four. We have been advised this week that TAFE is just finalising the logistics for that. But now that we're back to face-to-face -to -face learning, they will be um, putting out the information on when those will start. Anyone who has not yet gotten into a trade taster program, unfortunately, those are completely full now and have a very significant waiting list. So you won't be able to access those. But if you are interested in any work experience in trade areas, then your student is welcome to come and see me and we can discuss the details of that. Okay, I've just asked Ms. Gallagher to go back to the ATAR calculation page. We have a question here about their student doing Cert 3 in hospitality but they're still doing subjects to gain ATAR, so do they have to work for uni? I thought it might be better to go back to just that page, yeah. explain how it contributes to ATAR. So VET can be used in two ways in your ATAR. So VET can be used to do the ATAR calculation as well as for direct entry. So if you are using VET for your ATAR calculation, you will then receive an ATAR score and be able to use the ATAR score for university entry without having to wait. Okay, so that would mean you're using the option on the right hand side where you're having four general subjects and one certificate three um, or higher contribute to your ATAR calculation. So if you have used BET in this way, then you can use that ATAR calculation for direct entry into university without having to wait. If you are using BET just in combination with an English subject for direct entry and with no ATAR calculation, then the waiting periods apply. Um, got a question here about doing six subjects and their best part of counting. Maybe give an example of where that would work. Yep. So if you're, for example, taking um, English, maths, uh, physics, yeah. chemistry, biology, and ancient history, and English is not your first language, it may not be the highest result, but you have to do English in, also, in order to get an ATAR. So then your other five subjects other than English will be used to calculate your ATAR, but your English will be used as the prerequisite for university entry. Cool. Good. Yeah, thanks, At the moment. Yeah. Feel free to type any more questions if you have any at this point in time. Oh, um, I sort of saw the prerequisite for English was a B in year 10. That is correct. So as I said, um, we're 
wanting all students to have a minimum standard in year 10 to be to just ensure that they can cope with the workload of general English in year 11 and 12. But if your student doesn't currently have a B in year 10, then in set planning we can discuss this and we can look at a reset planning option once we've put in a plan for your student to improve their result across term three and see if they can get to that B by the end of term three. And then we'll reevaluate the results and be able to change your set plan um, subject selection to accommodate those new results and put you into that general English subject. Is there a prereq for essential English? There is no prerequisites for any applied essential or VET subjects. The only re prerequisites are in place for general subjects. Maybe talk about students that we recommend do BSK? Yep. So if you think that um, essential English and essential maths might be too difficult for you in terms of the uh, content and the workload, we have a certificate two in skills for work and vocational pathways. And this is a subject that is maths aligned so that if you find maths difficult, you can select this subject as your math subject and then be able to do maths in this format and also tick off your literacy and numeracy component of your Queensland Certificate of Education. This maths is sufficient to allow you to enter any VET pathway post school, as well as move into direct employment and uh, traineeships um, as your pathway post school. Interesting one. Can you confirm that students may choose only five general subjects and have a study period as a sixth option? No, you will be required to select six subjects at Corinda State High School. This is to ensure that you have the best opportunity to have a a fallback plan or to ensure that you get enough points for your QCE. The only students that are on study lines here at Corinda State High School are students who are doing an external VET course, which means that that is their sixth subject and they are out one day a week and the study line is in place to support the completion of their other subjects and especially catch up on the ones that they miss while they're out one day a week. Um. Two more questions here. If you want to study in ATAR, is, are, not, are you not wanting to study in ATAR? Is there a limit on the number of certs that you can apply for? Uh, there's no limit on the number of certificates that you can apply for. The limit is on the funding and the combination of subjects. So the other thing that I'll make sure when we do our subject selection is that you don't engage in what we call duplication of learning, which means that you can't do multiple certificates that double up um, on units of competency and you're doing the same thing more than once. So you are able to do um, a range of VET subjects and you could do an English and five VET subjects if that's what your set plan uh, looks like and that's what's the best course of study for you. So what I will ensure is that there's no duplication and I'll also be very considered in letting anyone do more than one certificate three or higher VET course because the workload associated with these is quite significant and usually has um, a vocational competency component whereby the student has to go into the workplace and do a minimum number of hours in order to achieve, to achieve that qualification and we want to ensure that the students can still achieve success. Um. Is it compulsory for all senior students to study FSK? No, it is not compulsory at all. FSK is a qualification for um, students who are looking at that as a maths option, but we would look at um, that if that's appropriate for you. All students will study an English subject, all students will study a math subject and for some students that will be FSK, but we will select the most appropriate one for you. And FSK is the certificate two in skills for work and vocational pathways. So all students though, in second semester of year 10, will stu study a VET qualification called certificate two in active volunteering. This is a subject that by its name and nature suggests that students will look at volunteering. 
And we'll look at this as part of our positive education program and a means for students to give back to the community and to engage in some compulsory volunteering components. So this is the only compulsory VET qualification that we have at Corinda State High School, but one that we embrace as a positive outcome for our students and our community. Moment. We'll just give. Oh, here we go. Um, if they volunteer outside school, will those hours be counted? Absolutely, those hours will be counted, and we will give the students a form that we call a third party report so that the volunteering organisation can just confirm those hours and that volunteering process for the student, and that will be more than sufficient to um, be counted as their volunteering hours. Okay, so I How think we've. Hours are saying, yeah? 20 hours. Oh, the 20 hours is the number for the active volunteering course. So I think we've come to the end of our question and answer session, but if you have any more questions, please feel free to email them through to Jake Gallagher um, and he will uh, pass them on to me and um, get that happening. Uh, and I will be very happy to answer any questions that you have or see you during set planning. And he will also email out the instructions for how to book in for your set plan. But that concludes our session for this evening. And I wanna thank you for the